Yes, Lord. Oh, you are good. Yes, you are. You are good.
Great is the Heavenly Father, yes, thank you, Lord. and we're blessed with the earthly fathers in here today. Amen. I believe we have a bit of a post. You may be sitting. I know we switch very fast there, but <laughs> hallelujah. I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey, hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple of hours? Thanks. <laughs> Money really does grow on trees. Money does grow on trees. So I'd like all the dads to stand. Dads, grandpas. Okay. We got at least one upstairs. Mm -hmm. So I need some kids. Need some help. Kids. There we go. There we go.
really felt like the Lord was saying to me, ah, oh, men, and our society hasn't always honored men the way that they should in our sitcoms and different things. In the issue of abortion, men are completely forgotten. Your rights, the fact that you're not always wrong. Mm -hmm. So I just honor you today, all you men and all you dads, and I thank you for your sacrifices. And I thank you for everything that you've given us. And you've given us, most of you, you've given us your lives. Amen. So thank you. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> whew. So, as most of you know, <laughs> This beautiful family is flying Wednesday, Wednesday, to Arkansas, they and their family, um, to live there. So why don't you come up? Come on up. And, um, you know, I knew that Calypso had had a really good job offer, and they also have, he also has family there. And... Uh, But it all happened very fast. <laughs> they got a house last week, and they're moving this week, right? Thank so, and um, and also, uh, Precious's mom and dad, they're they're flying back to Cameroon. Oh wow! Thank you, Lord. So we really want to bless them yes. on their you, their Lord. journey, and we Thank will. You. It's good to see you. It's yes. good to see you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So. I know that you wanted to just share a bit or say, say goodbye or say hi, how are you? Or so, <laughs> and, but, you know, you've been a precious part of our house. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, and how is everyone doing, by the way? Sad now. <laughs> awesome. Good, yeah, I'm not doing very good myself this morning. <laughs> It's a bright day outside, but it is not very bright in my heart right now. But I think God knows tomorrow. Amen. That's the best we, I can say right Amen. now. Um, Amen. It's been a blessing to be in this house. It's been a blessing being part of this congregation. Yeah. As in, um, family is that person who is with you in your highest moment and in your lowest moment. And you've been that and more. You are our family. We're going away for a while. It's just for a while. We'll be back. You'll see us very often. As much as we can make it down here, we'll come. So it's not as if we're going never to return. This is home. We'll always be back. And uh, we love you so much and thank you so much for everything you've done for us. All the prayers you've offered for our family, we are so grateful. We can't thank you enough. And thank you so much, Pastor Eve, for allowing us serve in whichever way. It's been an honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She said it all. <laughs> thank you. Um, and the truth about it is, we'll definitely be back. Uh, it's just a flight away. We're not going, our parents are going to Africa, to Cameroon, um, but we're just across the border. And um, you know, when Pastor Eve ordained, uh, when, she, when we were called in to be elders, leaders in this uh, church, this great church, one word she said was, it's elders for life. I don't know if you remember it, you actually said it. Elders for life. So we are part of this house, never to depart. And, um, and please, we are a phone call away. Call us. Uh, of course, we'll be calling back. Um, there's a lot going on in my heart right now. Uh, I'll just... One thing I'd like to say anyways, the uniqueness of this house. The uniqueness of this house. It is easy to take for granted what you are accustomed to because you see it every day. 
Um, but take a step out. Then you discover the favor of God upon her life by reason of the association, the place you are planted to be, you're planted in. And that is the blessing we've enjoyed. Um, because you called us into leadership, God has revealed many things to us about the DNA of this church. Which by, That's why we say we are not leaving yet. We are, we are just going, but we'll come back. Because there's a glorious manifestation that we are also awaiting for this ministry, for this house. There's an expectation. Scripture says, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. There is an expectation that we also carry as part of the, this house, as children of this house, as part of the leadership of this house. So, um, final word, we are not going forever. We'll come back by God's grace. And thank you for sharing your everything with us. Thank you, Pastor Eve. Thank you, leadership. Thank you, the church. You've been amazing. Thank you. God bless you richly. And we'll continue to pray for one another. Amen. 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 <laughs> so I want to make sure you don't forget. So we got a few little mementos. <laughs> So, so in here, you know, I see where you're going, and they really don't get enough snow Amen to that one. where you're going. So we got three cans of snow that the kids could actually make snow. <laughs> and we also have a cute little ornament there for your first, for your first Christmas. To remember, to remember us, right? Just a little ornament. And what else have I got in here? Oh, of course, we got Canada pencils, of course, and some maple syrup lollipops. <laughs> Only for the children. <laughs> and, and, and also, and this is a, it says thank you. I really wanted to get something saying gratitude, but how grateful we are that you came into our midst. And this is actually a card. You open it up in the back and you can read it. But just want to th thank you for being part of our house, for being such a blessing in our house. And uh, we're going to miss you till we see you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just a few little things. Hallelujah. Roll along. Wow, I think I miss you already. <laughs> They've really been a blessing to this house, haven't they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm glad to hear that he said they'll be back. Just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so as is my custom... So everyone seems to be in, in such a hurry today to scream racism these days, right? Well, a customer asked, um, in what aisle would I find the Newfie sausage? This, well, before I start, are there any people from Newfoundland in the room? <laughs> I was going to change it to Hittites because... All the Hittites are dead, so I know I'm not going to offend anyone. <laughs> but see how there aren't any Newfoundlanders in the house. We'll um, proceed. <clears throat> so, a customer asked, in what aisle could I find the Newfie sausage? The shop assistant asked, are you from Newfoundland? And the guy, clearly offended, says, yes, I am. But let me ask you something. If I had asked for Italian sausage, would you ask me if I was Italian? Or if I asked for German bratwurst, would you ask me if I was a German? Or if I asked for a kosher dog, would you ask me if I was Jewish? Or if I asked for a taco, would you ask if I was Mexican? Or if I asked for Polish sausage, would you, would you uh, ask me if I was Polish? And the shop assistant said, well, no, no, pro probably I wouldn't. 
And the guy says, well, then, because I asked for Newfie sausage, why did you ask if I'm from Newfoundland? And the clerk replied, well, because you're in Home Depot. That's a dad joke, yeah. So all you dads, write that one down. It's a good one to tell your kids in the car as you're driving somewhere, right? So I wanted to look at, I'm actually preaching the offering, in case you didn't get that yet, uh, as is my custom every third Sunday of the month. Uh, in Jeremiah 29.11, it says... In the New King James, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And, uh, you know, the word thoughts, and I won't try to say what the, what the Hebrew word actually is, but it, but it means intention. It means plan. And in some of the translations, it actually says, I know the plans that I, that I have for you. It also means um, purpose. It also means thought and, and, and ima imagination. And um, it, it comes, every, every Hebrew word has, has three letters that's sort of the primitive root. I'm not going to teach Hebrew because I don't know it. But, but I know enough about it that every word has that three-letter three letter base, and then they build on it on either side and give, and so that to change its meaning. But the base word or the root word for, for thoughts is to plate or to braid or to in, inter, interpenetrate. It, it literally means to weave or fabricate, and it means to plot or, or contrive. So first of all, um, did you know that God is thinking about you, that he has thoughts for you? I, um, I don't know, just um, it just kind of stunned me when I thought, you're, th you're thinking about me? You think about me? But he does, and he thinks about you. Yeah. And, and you guys that are watching on TV. Um, he he uh, is thinking about you, and not only thinking about you, but he has plans for you. He, he sees things. In, in his imagination, he, he, th he sees things for you, that, that will bring peace into, into your life and, and peace and prosperity. It says, um, you know, the, the Lord says, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the word, the root word is to weave or to fabricate or, or to braid. He wants to braid his plans into our lives. Isn't that neat? He has thoughts, imaginations, and plans for us. And, you know, we certainly have our own plans, don't we? I know exactly what I'm going to do when I leave here. Um, but God has, uh, thinks about us, meditates on us, imagines for us, and then, ha and then creates plans that he wants to weave into our lives, to braid them in, it, it says. Um, and, it, and it's because... He, he loves us, and, and, and I don't know that we'll ever understand the love of God. I know I was, um, what really got me one day, I was, I was praying, and I don't remember what I was praying about, but anyway, I, I, heard the, I heard the Lord say, I am there, I am present at every birth, every time, every time an eternal being is brought into the world, I am there. Because I love those, those creatures that have come from the eternity, that, have come, that are eternal beings. I love those. And he's there at every, at every birth. And I thought, wow. But, you know, when I think about his character and I think about his love, it does, I'm not as surprised as I was. He, he, he cares about each individual so much. In fact, you know, we used to sing that... Um, that song, uh, when he looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus. And I, you know, I used to sing that song so reverently and, and so uh, righteously and so wrongly, right? 
He doesn't see you and he doesn't see, uh, I mean, he doesn't see Jesus when he sees you. He sees you. It's you. You're the one that's important to him. I'm the one that's important to him. He loves me. Not because Jesus is in me. He loves me because I'm me. And he was there when, when I was birthed into the earth, when I, be, when I became an eternal being on this planet. He was there and loved me and loves you. And he, uh, he doesn't love you just because you're born again, right? He just loves you. And um, e each one of us is very valuable and precious in his, in his sight. Can you, can you see that? Can you say that in your heart? I am valuable and precious to God. Try that when you go home today. Look in the mirror and go, hey, you, you're valuable and precious to God. He loves you. I know the first time I tried doing that, I thought, <laughs> he doesn't know me very good, <laughs> right? Um, but like I started out by saying, we probably will never really get our heads totally around how much God loves us and what the love of God really, really means. Um, in, um, in the Amplified um, classic, Jeremiah 11 says, for I, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. He's come to get, his thoughts toward us are never evil, they're never bad, and they're, and he, uh, you know, he never sees us the way we see us, and, and he never sees us the way your wife sees you, you know, <laughs> which is fortunate, because um, um, he always sees us at our, at, at our best, because he sees it, that we're valuable and precious in his sight, and that we're we're eternal beings, and we have eternal value. And, uh, you know, some of you are saying, well, yeah, well, you know, I've asked God to weave his plans into my life, and, you know, it's not working out all that good so far. Well, um, how many have seen the best Marigold Hotel, the best exotic Marigold Hotel? This is not a commercial for that movie, and if you haven't seen it, don't bother. It's not that good. But... <laughs> But the, the lead character in there who, who owns this ramshackle hotel thinks it's marvelous and he has such vision for it. But the line that got me in the, in the movie, he, he says, um, everything will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, well, it's because it's not the end. Right? It's not the end. And so it, it's the transition that's, that always gives us trouble. And God has plans for us and has purposes for us, and has a vision for us, so that our, our outcome is going to be marvelous. And right now, we're maybe in the transition space, or maybe some of you have already come, I've arrived, I've got it. My plans, or his plans are woven into mine, and we're just cruising. Well, great, but for those of us that are still, you know, um, going over the speed bumps, um, it's going to work out. Everything's going to work out because he wants to weave his plans and his, and his dreams and his visions for us into ours and, and become entwined with, with us. And um, so I'm preaching the offering, but I wanted to, I wanted to say that to say that when we, when we bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, what we're saying is, you know, uh, Jesus, you know, I, I have my, my plans and I, and I have my ideas, but I want to weave, I want you to weave your plans into my life. I accept the fact that you have thoughts, that you have imaginations, that you have plans, that you have intentions for me. And so I'm putting my money in the, in the offering today to tell you that I don't care about my plans so much. I want your plan. I want you to weave your plans and your purposes into my life, and those blessings that you've that you outlined for me to give me to give me peace and to give me hope and to give me a future. I'm I'm taking hold of that today. So I'm so just bring your offerings today, and uh, and let's declare that together, Jesus. 
weave your, weave your stuff into my life. Amen. 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 Praise God. And you know, that song used to bug me the, after I figured out what grace was and how God loves us. He loves us individually, you know, and, and I understand, you know, I say, well, he looks at us, he sees Jesus. Well, he sees what Jesus has done in us. Thank God, right? Uh, but he loves us because he loves us, right? And he loves us so much that he wants us to be entwined with his purposes, right? Because those purposes are also the purpose why we were born. And it's interesting that the first scripture I have here is 2 Timothy 9, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace, his purpose and grace in your life. This grace is given us in Christ Jesus from the beginning of time. But it has not been revealed through the appearing until the through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who was who has destroyed, abolished, I love this scripture, death, and has brought life and immortality to light. He has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Uh, there's always, you know, an immortality in the sense of we are eternal beings, so we never disappear. But we do have a direction. And he came to make that direction sure. That, uh, that direction is with Christ Jesus. That direction is with God the Father. And the scripture I was thinking about when, when Jerry was speaking is Romans 8, 28. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. I think as the King James says, according to his purpose, all things work together for good according to his purpose for those who love God. But it's according to his purpose. Not everything works together for good if it's not that purpose, right? But thank God when we get hold of God and we begin to hear him and walk with him, it's according to his purpose that all things work together for good. If you get sick, is God trying to get some good purpose into you? Yeah, yeah, that you don't want to be sick. That's the only purpose, being sick. I got to get well. I got to get healed. Because God does not push on us sickness and disease. Listen, if sickness brought people closer to God, we would be in the middle of revival the first year of COVID. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, there wouldn't be a person not born again on the, on the planet. Sickness is not, does not, is not a blessing. Wellness and wholeness and knowing God didn't make you sick. Even that in itself is a blessing. Hallelujah. Do you, it, it always, it always, I mean, I used to think like this, so I understand, but, but uh, would you want your child to be sick? Would you be blessing your child by just giving them sugar sandwiches? Would you do things to cause harm? There was actually a little girl in Venice's kindergarten class that used to have white bread sugar sandwiches. That poor little thing had a rash all over her body. I don't know what happened to her, but I was sure praying for her house. Because there's something wrong there. And there's something wrong there if you would ever want your child sick. And you know they got that thing that people... Make their kids sick so they get sympathy and stuff. It's just weird. But all that stuff is spiritually weird, spiritually evil. And to think our father, our father, who sent his son, who loved the world so much, that he would bring sickness 
to teach us. You know what teaches us? His word teaches us. And what does he say in the word? What does he say in the word? He says, he sent his word to heal us of all diseases. He sent his word to do that. Hallelujah. Oh, let's get all that old religion, if it's even sticking around. If you online, if, it even, if you think this way, yeah, stop it. God loves you. God wants you well. He wants you whole. And you know, it's amazing. Some people can be crippled up or things like, and they give glory to God, and I'm not even going to touch that because that's their place. That's them and Jesus. But to me, the glory of God would come when the deaf hear. Jesus never laid hands on anyone, and they became sick. He laid hands on or spit in their eyes or <laughs> whatever he wanted to do. But the end result was healing and deliverance. Yeah. Healing and deliverance. Yeah. He never spoke, and people died. Matter of fact, he came to that poor widowed woman whose son was dead and what did he do he rose he raised that son from the dead yeah. Yeah. hallelujah <laughs> even after three days or was it four days with you know was Lazarus come forth do you know the shortest sentence in the Bible is Jesus wept the very human part of Christ, Jesus wept. And it was at the tomb of Lazarus. And it doesn't say why he wept. He was just going to raise them up. It wasn't like he missed them. You know what I mean? Like this wonderful thing was about to happen. I wonder if that weeping was a form of intercession or that weeping was for just the state of the heart around him. But he said, Jesus, Jesus spoke and said, come forth. You know, there was a, a minister years ago from New Zealand, and he had a woman in his church that she had the inability to, to read for whatever reason. But that the Lord gave her uh, like movies of the Bible. She would, she would see things, like she saw the, the, um, the guard. Remember when the guard and his family got born again, right? And, and then they got baptized? Well, she saw him getting baptized in a horse trough. You know, it was just interesting. He always wanted to see, well, what are you seeing about this one, you know? So it's very interesting. But she saw the raising of the dead of Lazarus and says that he came out still wrapped, but he, he like floated out, still wrapped. And I think it's interesting that Jesus Christ raised him from the dead, and he came out, like how would that freak you out? And he came out, and it said that, that he was still wrapped with, the grave clothes. And it's interesting that Jesus said, take the grave clothes off. That was the first, just remember, it was the first thing, because I, when I just got born again, I was just a new Christian, and the pastor said, do you have something to share? And that was what I shared. I says, Jesus, the power of Christ brought him out, but then he said we were to help to take the grave clothes off that we work together with God. We, his people work together, and don't we do that? Don't we help people get the grave clothes off? Don't we minister? Don't we encourage? Don't we bless? Thank you, Jesus. Abo so, abolished. Death was abolished. Well, I, I just been pretty mesmerized with the fact 
Jesus being the light of the world. And, you know, we talked about that light, the light of the world, and that he is the life. He is the life of the world. In him is life. And how death came into the world through the treason of men. But death came into the world. And how that we bow sometimes to things that are death. Death isn't just dropping down, you're gone from this earth. There's death that affects your spirit. There's death that affects your soul. There's death that affects your thinking. There's death, you know, that manipulates. And and what it is, is it just robs life from you. The death comes to rob life. <clears throat> but, you know, isn't it interesting in, in 1 John when, when the, the Lord says, yeah, but he can't overtake it. He can't overtake the light that God has brought. He can't overtake the life that God has brought into the earth. He tries, but he can't comprehend it. He cannot confound it. He cannot confound the life of God. He cannot confound the love of God. He cannot confound because when you know him, you are not confounded. You are not confounded. So no, bad things can be going on. Things can be happening. But inside of you, there's that, there's that power of hope. I love that. I love that scripture. It says that, that we are prisoners of hope. And I tell you, I, I can say my own life in the darkest of times. There was always that flicker of hope. And, you know, the prophet was speaking that from a horrible dungeons type thing. There's always a flicker of hope. Why do we have that flicker of hope? Because he is the God of all hope. When he gives us hope, it sticks. And it may be covered over with the blankets of life. But I tell you what. When the Holy Spirit starts moving, when God starts ministering, those blankets start flying off, and there it is that he is our hope. He is our life. He is our light. He is everything. We cannot be Christians without him, right? Uh, We cannot be Christians. We were never meant to walk as Christians by ourselves. Otherwise, we'd have given up. How many of you are not perfect? Don't put your hands up. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's some have put the mirrors up twice, so I'm not sure what that's about. Okay. There's a natural death which we all face. But until then, death is our enemy. Till then, death is our enemy. Because we are to love life. No matter what's going on, we are to love life. You know, we were talking about the tremendous power of gratitude, the tremendous power that even scientifically they're proving, the tremendous power of thinking right, the tremendous power of being thankful. How much more? I mean, God was talking about that in his scripture like 2,000 years ago, about whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure. You know, think on these things. How many know there's so much stuff to think about that's life itself, that if you're not getting filled up, if you're not meditating on the life of God in you, if you are not seeing who you are on the earth, if you're not seeing that these hands are made to lay hands on the sick, if you're not saying that, that you change atmospheres by, the, by your words, by the power of Christ in you, then, then we, what are we doing? We are called to be instruments of life. Not by our own power, but his power in us. And to say, I can't do it, is to say God's power isn't in you. 
to say, I don't know how to do it. Well, the Holy Ghost can lead you. There's teachers, there's words, the script, of course, the scripture. Like, there's ways. To, if you want to know, boy, I tell you, we prioritize what we like. We prioritize what's important in our lives. And if we're not prioritizing this living book, then we are lacking. We are lacking in our daily walk. We are lacking with the ability not only to prosper in our own life, spirit, soul, body, and pocketbook, but we are lacking in that we don't have the words of life for others. That, you know, when we walk into a room, the atmosphere should change. Not because you're the best looking in the room or the smartest in the room. Some of you may be, but that's not the reason. It's just God in you, and you know, God's looking around saying, okay, who needs your prayer today? Who needs just your love today? Who needs that wisdom today? How about that idea I gave you and that business deal? That person needs that today. He gives us wisdom to walk on the earth. He gives us wisdom for answers, whether it's business, whether it's family, whether it's church. He gives us wisdom and understanding for answers. I love what Barry Miracle says. Be the answer, not the problem. Don't you love that? Don't be the problem. Be the answer. Does the world need answers? Wow. I know I've said this before, but when I've used it, when you've preached years and years and years and years in the same place, you've heard most of what I said before, right? All my stories, I tell you, when I went out to Grand Prairie, I was lit because I had all fresh meat. No one knew my stories. I tell you, I just had a great time. And so did they. We had a ball. We had a ball. Now I forget which one I was talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry? Be the answer, not the problem. Okay, where did I go from? I never know where I go, so... <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Right? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Speaking of life over death, my oldest daughter wouldn't be here. Ashley, neither would my middle daughter. And Vanessa, my goodness, my grandchildren. Because there's times where God warns you. And there's times you can miss it. So this is no judgment on anyone. But there's times. Went into a clinic with Eva. She's little. They wanted to take some x-rays for her bladder. They started to inject her. And before, before they came into that room... I felt the spirit of death. How do you know what the spirit of death feels like? Well, I just knew it was the spirit of death. And so I started praying. I thought, maybe someone's in trouble in the clinic. It wasn't like a hospital. It was a clinic, right? And so I just started praying. And, um, and then they started coming in. It's a lot of amazing amount of people in there, like nurse and doctor and technicians behind the glass and kind of a little strange at the time and and so they started injecting her with that dye to be able to x-ray you know to be able to see and she started to sneeze and I said she's allergic but by that time it was already in her body and her throat closed. 
And the doctor says, get the antidote, points to a drawer. Nurse runs, opens it, says, it's not here. Just go find some. And so she runs out. She took so long coming back that he sent another one out. In the meantime, my daughter can't breathe. It's my daughter sitting in the back. She's usually at this organ right here. Eva could not breathe. And I remember, because I was seated, pregnant with, I believe, Faith. And uh, her eye level was level with mine. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, connected us in the spirit there was no fear in her eyes and i was just talking in tongues talking in tongues thank you jesus for talking in tongues and and i remember after one nurse kept saying excuse me and and i just went like this she probably thought i was a foreigner and just talking in tongues And finally, they come back with the antidote, put it directly into her vein in her hand. And, and of course, that's kind of a painful spot. She tried to yell, but she had no breath. No sound came out. And then she started to breathe. A sigh of relief in that room. And a nurse bless her heart, came and just sort of patting Eva's face down, you know, and stuff like that. And Eva was just lying there. <laughs> and she, she was like five, four or five. And she looked up at the nurse, and the nurse patted her down, and she says to the nurse, in her raspy voice now, because of the damage, said, do you know Jesus? <laughs> God was in the room. And the nurse said, Yes, I do. And I thought, isn't that like Jesus to put one of his kids in the room with you? And the technician said after me, I, I don't know why your daughter lives. I says, I know. God kept her alive. He has the power over death. He does. And we die prematurely. I understand. I understand, but, you know, Moses Sabo, I mean, he, he was in terrible shape at the beginning of this week, and he's uh, in the hospital, and, man, he just had a supernatural touch of God, you know. And some say, well, if you're older, you just, you know, you've lived. Excuse me? <laughs> you know who says that? People who aren't older. You know who talks about, well, I wouldn't want to live if I didn't have quality of life? You know who says things like that? In your 40s or 50s. Or in your 20s. But you know, you may not be walking as good as you used to in your 70s or 80s. But you still have quality of life. You're still here. You're still here. Until you're ready to go, when you put up your feet and say, I'm going home, that's fine. Remember Reese Howell, he was an intercessor in the United States. And his wife passed. You know, they were older. His wife passed. And he was going to pray for her to rise up, and God said, no. He was so mad, so mad that he couldn't die, that she went ahead of him. He was ticked. So finally God told him, the day he was going to die. You're going to die in this day, this time. And then he, he was okay with that. So he told his daughter, a few people, so okay, I'm going to die in so and so day. Well, that day, his daughter was in the kitchen making him breakfast. He was sitting in his favorite chair and went home. Death is not a threat to those who know him. 
We don't want to be sick. Don't want to be in pain. But as long as you have breath, we're able to praise the Lord. As long as we have breath, we're able to bless. As long as we have breath, we have a purpose on the earth. I think of Mrs. Wise into her 90s. Hallelujah. Still getting up and praising God. In him I live. <laughs> it's her favorite scripture. In him I live. Hallelujah. That's why we do believe for health. That's why we do believe for strength. That's why we do believe, you know, I mean, we can do things not well, but how much better can we do them well? Hallelujah. Because he is our strength. He is our healer. Hallelujah. And all that old stuff has to go. It says that Jesus couldn't do or didn't do many healings in his hometown because of unbelief. So there is a part we play that we need to get rid of how the thinking is negative or how the thinking is opposing to truth. That's our part. Only you can change your mind. And the word of God gives you the power and the source to be able to do that. Hallelujah. To understand who lives in you, to understand who loves you, to understand the light of God that lives in you, to understand where others have not a clue of what's going on and only see the world and the mess and, and you know... <laughs> And see, my, is this Armageddon like this? It's crazy. Like, you know, uh, there's one thing after another. I was listening to another thing yesterday. I think, holy mackerel. Uh, you know, there's so, there's so much evil. There, there's so much evil. There's so much things to do, trying to destroy freedom. But I tell you, no matter what, because I believe in fighting that fight. In the, f in, in the middle of all this, if you're not free inside, if you're not free inside, if you're in fear inside, all this other stuff is a really big noise. Instead of you being in the place to be able to bless, be able to pray, be able to be a peacemaker in your little corner, your little corner, If you pray for our schools right now, right now, this week in particular, this month in particular, that you're praying for our schools, that you're praying for our children, there's some demonic stuff going on. Are you praying for your, are you praying when you go by? I tell you, are you praying? Have you taken the responsibility to pray for the schools that you go by? Are you taking the responsibility? There's such evil going on. Are you taking the responsibility? Because greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. And your prayers affect life. John G. Lake, you know, I was, he's got an amazing little booklet, but uh, talking about healing. And John G. Lake, there, there are healing rooms in Spokane pretty well emptied the hospitals. Doctors had to move. They had no patients. You know, I was about the 30s, I think. It was the healthiest city in America. They even gave John G. Lake a, a key to the city or something because the healthiest in America. And he was a, he loved to find out the facts about everything. And he really had like a scientific type mind and, and uh, in the hospital. And they had this thing that you attach and there's a certain level of power that's in your body and stuff. 
And so, you know, the doctors were trying this stuff out on him because people were getting healed, trying this stuff out on him. And, you know, he's just talking and stuff, just normal. Then he started meditating on the Lord, and it started to get a bit. Then he started quoting the word that was alive to him, and that thing just went right off the scale. Because in you is the power of God. When you quote his word, when you believe his word, you do become fire. Just like they put the bubonic plague on his hand, and it died. That's who we're called to be. That's who we're called to be. And we just pray for that Jesus walk yesterday, that that, that which was purpose that it was called to do would not be covered, but would be increased. And that the blessing of God with his children proclaiming his goodness would keep our city, would help our city. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I got a quarter of the way down my page, so we'll quit there. (laughs) Hallelujah. So today, be thankful. Be thankful. If you are spiritually born again, be thankful. If you know you can pray to a God who hears, be thankful. If you fight in the realm of the spirit, be thankful. If you maybe have slowed down, speed up. Be thankful. If you've been worn out, time to get strengthened. Be thankful. Be thankful. Thanks be to God, which causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God, which causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that wonderful about God? That no matter the state we can get into, he has the power to lift it off of us. He has the power. He has the power. That we would, that we would be his instruments of righteousness on the earth, that we would do our part, uh, that we would believe that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What does righteous mean? As it should be, how God sees things. Righteousness, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I love what Smith Wigglesworth said, and I think, he says, I never prayed more than half an hour but I never go a half an hour without prayer. Okay, it's, it's part of your life. It's part of our life. And that we bless today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That death be abolished in us. Death be abolished in us. For you have destroyed death, and you have brought life and immortality. You have brought life and immortality. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That death is just one second we're here and the next second we're with you. Hallelujah. But God, the death that tries to affect our beings, we thank you for your life. We thank you for revelation, understanding. We push back that which is not ours. We push back that which does not belong to us. And the things of death that try to snare, the things of death that try to influence, the things of death that come to rob hearts, to take out courage. Father, we thank you today that we proclaim life. 
We proclaim that which you have done through the cross. We proclaim that which you have done through the blood. We proclaim that which you have spoken in your word. And we thank you today that we receive strength. We receive your purpose. We receive what you see. We receive your purpose now in our lives. We receive that, God. And where we've been sidetracked, we thank you, God. You're the God who can pull us right back into the right pathway. Because you have a pathway already prepared, your Bible says, already prepared for us. Father, I pray for this house today and those who are watching online. God, may our eyes see. May our ears hear. May our hearts be softened that we would know your purpose on the earth. We would accomplish that purpose in us. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Christ, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name.